Good morning, everyone. It is Saturday, December the 17th, 2022. And today I'm at Sam Houston Jones State Park in Moss Bluff, Louisiana, which is just north of Lake Charles in the southwest part of the state. And today we're going to be hiking the new loop that goes around Sam Houston Jones State Park. As you saw earlier uh, in the first couple of slides, there was significant damage out here, unfortunately, from Hurricane Laura. It hit the area in August of 2020, and it had 130 mile an hour winds coming through here, which is basically the equivalence of an F4 tornado. And so there used to be a lot of trees in this park. There's still a decent amount, but it's definitely different than what it used to look like. So it took a while for them to recover and repair everything. And I'm gonna show you today as I go through uh, the new cabins and campgrounds and so forth. But along with that, the trails changed. And I'm gonna show on the screen now what the trail system used to look like. There used to be a very popular loop that I used to take along with a lot of people that basically was about six and a half miles that covered about three trails and a short walk along the park road. Some of that is still there, but a lot of it has changed. The good thing is, is that with all the changes that they've made, they've actually added some trails. And so the map looks like this. So you can see that there's been a lot of changes. I'm going to go through it thoroughly today. For those of you that have been out here in the past before the hurricane, they're, they're used to the old trail system. I'm gonna point out what's still there and what's no longer there. And I'm gonna go ahead and measure the mileage today too, because I'm not sure exactly what it's gonna come out to being with this new loop, but it looks like it's definitely gonna be a little longer than it used to be. I'm thinking it's probably going to be in that seven to eight mile range, but I am going to go ahead and put it after I record the video, not only the entire length, but each trail, uh, because it looks like based upon the map, I'm going to end up including seven trails now as part of this loop. So it should be real exciting. Uh, I know that Jay's ready to get started. I've got her in the car right now waiting for me to get started because it is a little chilly. But definitely looking forward to showing you today the new Sam Houston Jones Trail. All right, well, we're leaving the parking lot now and we're gonna travel in a counterclockwise direction. So we're gonna follow along this short stretch of the park road and get to our first trail segment. At about two tenths of a mile from the parking lot, we're gonna approach the Orange Trail. And this is an actual trail that was in existence prior to the hurricane. It's intact the way it was before. This is gonna be about a mile and a half and we're gonna get started on this now. trail was always a favorite stretch of mine to walk because as you're seeing we have a river to the right and a swamp to the left the river to the right is the west fork of the Calcasieu river and you can see there's some beautiful homes on the other side of this river which actually marks the beginning of west lake and so it's you can tell a little different but not significantly different 
Uh, there used to be a few signs that indicated different types of habitat and vegetation like you find at a lot of other state parks, but I'm sure they're gonna end up eventually replacing those. But in the meantime, we're about to finish this orange trail section of the loop and get to our next section. Just shy of two miles, we come to the end of the Orange Trail. And you can see, if you go straight ahead right here, that's the park road. The old way to continue on the loop is you would turn left and there would be a short distance down this way. And I'll zoom in right around where that curve is. And you can see the lagoon. You would cut across on the Red Trail. Now, that section of the Red Trail is still in existence. Time permitting, I'm gonna try to get on that section at the end of this hike. But instead of going in that direction, there's now a new trail that goes to the right. And it's gonna lead us back over to near the entrance station. And this new trail is called the Scouts Connector Trail. We've come to the end of the Scout Connector Trail at the 2.2 mark of this loop. You can see we're right back at the entrance of the state park. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut across here and this next section is the Purple Trail. wanted to talk for a few seconds about this purple trail. This is basically the old, if I have this right, the lower blue trail extension. About 10 years ago, and I'll talk more about the blue trail later on on the site today, but they created an alternate for the blue trail and it would come back across to where we started a little while ago at the entrance station much of this is the old lower blue extension it's not exact but quite a bit of it they've basically been able to clear it back out there are a few changes what is pretty cool though what i'm seeing so far and it goes back even to the scout connector trail these trails that are new or are redone are much wider than they used to be. I know that from doing my research before coming out here, there are several organizations that have been working on this, including some bike organizations. So it makes sense that they wanna go ahead and be able to create some wider paths that would suit both bicyclists and hikers. But this one definitely has a lot of switchbacks. And we'll continue on the Purple Trail and I'll show you a few more videos. I just came from this direction and I'm starting to notice there's a couple of side trails. You'll notice about a quarter of a mile prior to this section, there was a split to the left and you could tell it was definitely just a little dead end. It was looked like a, a section where they went in to dig out a couple of trees. But what I've been doing is sticking to my left for the most part on this section. 
and what we're gonna do now is we're gonna continue on in this direction and in a short distance from here we should be connecting with the old blue trail. At mile marker 3.4 of this loop to the left here is the original blue trail. And you can see the signage. So one thing I wanna point out, I'm gonna walk up to this here. There was an upper blue and a lower blue. And you can see that the upper blue is no longer there, at least as of now. So we're gonna get on the lower blue, but keep in mind on the map that I'm gonna share with you all after this video, this is pretty much part of what they call now the Conservancy Trail. And we're gonna be on that for a while before we connect back with the original blue trail. But it's gonna utilize sections of this lower blue, but we're not gonna stay on it. Uh, we're actually gonna reroute a little further north and you'll see as we get further along in the next couple of miles. I've been filming sections of this Conservancy Trail that when you look at it, it looks pretty much like it was a little road that was created. Probably used this when they were coming through here and cutting out um, all the dead trees and pulling them out of here, which it is unfortunate um, for those of you who used to come out here prior to the hurricane, you can see all the damage, but they have done a very good job uh, with this particular path and clearing out all the trees and whatnot. And as you just saw in the last video, and I'll just go ahead and stop and show you, all's not lost. There's still some longleaf pines in here. And this was one of the sections that was very enjoyable for a lot of us because this was a very thick longleaf pine forested area. You didn't have to travel up to central or northern Louisiana to find it. Um, and so, you know, it's one of those things, but I am getting into a heavily wooded area again, and it looks like according to my map in a short distance, I'll be getting up to the pipeline and show you where the trail is gonna pass from there. For those of you who used to come out here, we were very spalled with bridges. <laughs> and we've had a little bit of rain this week. Actually, I think a little bit came through here last night because we have another cold front coming. But the good thing is, if you're a little bit more of the diehard type of hiker and you don't mind getting a little wet and muddy, uh, this is not a bad trail to come out on. So uh, definitely after all hard rain, if you want to cut through some water, you can come on out to this section of the trail for sure. We're now at mile 4.2 of this new loop. And we're at the pipeline. What we're going to do is we're going to turn right. I'll explain a little bit more later on. But it's actually a little further down, I believe. Somewhere in this direction is where the old blue trail used to run. So... I'm gonna see if they still have the signage. I think it's still there from what I'm seeing. Hopefully they still have that bench right there. Um, and if so, Jay and I are gonna stop and take a little quick lunch break. At mile marker 4.3, we come to the old connection of the pipeline and the blue trail. And you can see that we came from this direction that way and I'll zoom in. You can see the yellow sign uh, and just back to the left 
uh, is where we came from the trail. So I want to point out here, this is where the blue trail would continue. So we would go in that direction and we're going to be turning right here instead. And you'll see where we used to come out of. Uh, for those of you, if you traveled the same way I'm traveling today, counterclockwise, you can see the sign right there. The trail used to go in that direction. So we used to come back from here and continue on in this direction and go that way. <clears throat> so it's obviously changed a lot. Uh, you can see the old sign is still here uh, for the trail. But what we're going to do now is we're going to continue in this direction uh, for a short distance. And we're basically going to start traveling a little bit more north. So from here, it's going to be more of a northern edge of the park that we're going to travel along before we start making it back towards the river section. Just a short distance down from where I just recorded at mile marker 4.5. We're actually be going in this direction. But looking at the maps, they did create this side trail that if you continue it in that direction, it actually takes you back towards Sutherland Road, which is the road that takes you into the park. But as you can see, they're doing some work today. So when you come out here, you probably won't see this, but if you just want to extend your miles a little bit, you can turn right and then just do it out and back and then come back in this direction. I meant to point out back there that this is still part of the new Conservancy Trail. So I'm not sure what the plans are, if they're going to rebuild the old blue trail that I showed you a little while ago where it intersected with the pipeline. But there are sections of the blue trail that are open on the other side, closer to the river I'm going to show, which is probably in about a mile to a mile and a half from here. But according to the maps here, this is still part of the new Conservancy Trail. Now here's something you couldn't see on the old trail. We're on the property line of the park and there are a couple of beautiful horses in the background. You know, I have to say so far, this section of the Conservancy Trail from right before we hit the pipeline to now as we're getting closer to the intersection of the original Bloop Trail that I believe is open. This is actually a pretty cool stretch. Um, you know, when you took the old Blue Trail, I mean, it was super nice going through the thicket woods and you had a lot of the footbridges going across several water crossings, but I don't know if they, plan on making any changes out here or not with it but it's kind of cool the way it is it's a little bit more natural shall I say in the fact that you have a lot of elevation changes nothing significant of course because we're in southwest Louisiana however you have those natural water crossings and so for someone who likes to be able to come out to a place where they want to at least get a little trial run before they get on a much longer trail it does tend to provide you more of those elements than the original blue trail. So as soon as we get over to where this connects to the original blue trail, I'll go ahead and show it to you. At mile marker 5.7 of this loop trail, you can see here to the left, this is part of the new Conservancy Trail that was created. This would actually take you, if you go in this direction, back towards the main part of the park. So you'd probably go about maybe three quarters of a mile to a mile before you hit the first park road. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna continue on in this direction as we connect with the original Blue Trail.
at mile marker 6.1 is where we run into the original blue trail you can see that we came from that direction which was pretty cool incline actually um if you turn right the trail is going to dead end but we can go left now you could continue following along this conservancy trail it's just basically going to run parallel to the blue trail and it's just going to connect maybe two tenths of a mile from here but we're going to go ahead and get back on the original blue literally just a few hundred yards away. You can see where the Conservancy Trail comes back and runs parallel to the Blue Trail. Looking at the map, the Conservancy Trail is gonna basically run parallel to the original Blue Trail, but I do know this section very well, and it is a very nice walk, and it does extend the miles just a little bit more, so we're gonna stay on the Blue Trail in this direction. Yes, familiar surroundings. The same old bench survived Hurricane Laura. I can't tell you how many times we would take a break right here. And you can see there's the end of the pipeline back to the Houston River. So we're taking another short break right now. Um, we probably have at this point about a mile, I think, left of this new loop. Everything is pretty much gonna be like it was originally. Um, we're gonna continue to follow the blue trail, but I am gonna get off for a short distance and show you the yellow trail as well. I heard they made some really nice improvements to that. But it is good to be back on some original trail, even though we've enjoyed the new stuff. And so we're gonna take a quick water break and get back on trail here in a few minutes. All right, we're finishing up our quick break. This is, by the way, at mile marker 6.4. So that's the pipeline straight ahead, but you can see the trail then exits the pipeline very quickly. And we're going to continue on the blue trail in this direction. That uh, picture I just showed you a minute ago was assigned to what looked like an original primitive campsite. It had backpack number two. Um, if you watch my video I did about a month or so ago in Lake Fossey Point State Park, I had shown that there were several of them over there. I didn't even realize they had them at one time over here. I have to say, though, at this point, uh, I hope that they do restore that particularly in that new section where um, we were on the conservatory trail because I think that there would be a lot of people that would be interested in doing some overnight backpacking in different sections out here. At mile 6.6, .6, the Conservancy Trail, which is here to the left, intersects right here with the original Blue Trail. And looking at the new maps, it looks like much of this is considered combined. There's, I think, one little section on the old blue trail that was rerouted, but basically you'll just stay in this direction here before we get over to the yellow trail. Oh, 
at mile marker 6.9, the blue trail continues in this direction. And you can see the signage here. We just came from this direction. But this straight ahead, we're going to go ahead and take it. At mile marker 7.1, we come to the intersection of the blue trail and the yellow trail. Basically gonna follow along the banks of the river a little bit longer. at mile 7.6 of this new loop. You can see where the yellow trail starts. And right there, straight ahead is the blue trail. And it was only about maybe two tenths of a mile that we missed along the blue trail. If you wanna bypass the yellow trail, you can, but it was very pretty along the river for a stretch. So now what we're gonna do is we only have a short stretch left to the actual Troy head of the Blue Trail, so we're gonna head back in this direction. As you can see there, actually getting ready for a Christmas celebration out here. Want to point out a couple of things. We're back at the road now. This is a brand new restroom facility. They never had this on this end of the park. So that's nice to know as you pop out a trail. But what we're going to do now is we're going to continue in this direction as we make our way back towards the parking lot. At mile marker 7.8, you can see that the road splits to the right. They have some cabins down here. But what you want to do is you want to continue going in this direction. I wanted to point out right after that split, one of the things that the state parks are doing quite a bit of, and this is no exception, and this is new to Sam Houston Jones. You can see these large tents back here. This is basically glamping. These things are pretty nice. They actually have queen size beds in them, uh, picnic tables, you name it. So. There's a nice variety of camping out here. I'm gonna show the RV park uh, before we head out today. And then also some cabins, but definitely you have a different variety of selection depending upon how you wanna camp out here at this park. Just a little distance down are the new cabins. Now that I remember it, where all these glamping tents are, that used to be where the old cabins are located. So they just, built up right back here, the new cabins, but they look pretty nice from here, overlooking the river. At mile 8.1, you can see the road and the river's right here. I just wanted to point this out. I'm not gonna walk the whole distance. Um, is I wanna continue on the loop back to the car. But I'm gonna stop for a second. You can see I can zoom in here. You can see right there, this is a bridge that goes over the List Lagoon. And it's pretty cool. It's gonna lead you back to the old red trail. And I didn't talk about the red trail today because it's no longer part of the loop that we used to take and what most people walked. But the red trail does connect to this lagoon and it heads back to the forest road, but it doesn't lead back to the main entrance road. Uh, so basically what happens is 
you follow here, you cross the lagoon, and then when you get to the red trail, you would just turn right to get back to the road we're on right now. Oh, this is new. They never had this before. They have a walkway that goes through. You can see a couple of picnic tables and it looks like back here, I'm gonna try to check it out on my way out of here. It looks like it's another walkway. So it looks like they must have put two bridges instead of one out here over the lagoon, but I'm gonna go ahead and clarify this though at the end of the video. At mile 8.3, you can see that we're not far from the parking lot where we started all, but this is something I knew about that is brand new. I was pretty excited about seeing. Uh, right here, as you can see, we're walking over to the bank of the West Fork of the Calcasieu River, but they built this brand new boardwalk good ways down. So we're gonna walk this thing before we head back to the car. Back at the parking lot now, and that's where we came from. Sidewalk leads you back to the river and then the boardwalk. So, according to what I have here, it is 8.4 miles, uh, almost eight and a half to be exact, which is impressive. So, definitely, this is a lot longer of a trail than what it used to be for this loop. And I'm going to go ahead and see if I can check out real quick uh, some of the uh, sections I was talking about a little while ago over the lagoon. And I'm going to go ahead and give you my thoughts here at the end of this video. So this is the end of the red trail. If you go back in that direction and you go a little ways over, it will take you to the bridge across the lagoon. I wish I had time to do it today, but unfortunately I do not. But it is a really nice walk and it takes you back across uh, where the parking lot is. So it really is a nice uh, little loop. But I can tell you that the red trail does end right there at the bridge. Um, you can see right here, if you're familiar with the old park, uh, there was a couple of picnic tables and you would come out in this direction. The orange trail was back over here and it would lead you back here. And then on the old loop, you would just proceed down that way to the main park road, which would connect with the blue trail. But again, from the actual crossing over, actually from the bridge over the lagoon is where now the red trail stops. All right, we're, we're back in the car, which is a short distance from the sidewalk right over here. Uh, that's the pavilion and they're having a birthday party. So I'm gonna walk away a little bit and talk. But just so you know, um, it turned out to be exactly 8.5 miles right when we got to the car. So I just wanted to go ahead and give you my overall thoughts on today. First of all, again, for those of you who have been out here before in the past and you hike these trails, it is quite a different experience uh, because there's so much of the trees that are gone. When you first drive in to the entrance, it's a bit of a culture shock because there's basically no trees right there when you enter. And when you finish the orange trail and you get on the new uh, Scout Connector Trail, it's wide open. And then the first section of the Conservancy Trail is wide open. And then you continue on. But once you get further back, I would say towards more like the Northwest section of the park uh, where the new loop goes north of the original blue trail and it starts coming back towards the houston river that's when it starts looking familiar again um definitely you know closer in there was a lot of longleaf pines and of course those things snap like twigs uh when you have 130 mile an hour winds hitting it but what's really good uh about that new 
Conservancy Trail is it feels you know I was thinking about it as I was walking through that section it somewhat feels like parts of Kasachi um, particularly I would say the sandstone trail and because of the width and then the wild azalea trail because you have a lot of elevation changes but unlike the old trail where there was a lot of these footbridges it's a lot of natural crossing so it makes you feel like you really are out in the wilderness in those sections um, but definitely with the boardwalk that's real nice uh, as well that they've installed so all in all what's really good about it to sum it up is it's now an 8.5 loop um, mile I'm sorry an 8.5 mile loop so you can get a good half of a day out here uh, and enjoy yourself if you want to come and hike but of course there's a lot of other things as I point out to you today that have reopened and you can see there's a lot of enthusiasm out here the kids are having a birthday party they're about to have a Christmas celebration out here at the park tonight so I highly recommend that you come out here and check it out and support the park support the region uh, there's been a lot of work from volunteers out here to restore this along with of course the Office of State Parks. I'm going to go ahead and list at the end of the video today where you can get information about this park but I'm also going to list as well a particular group that's been working very hard uh, to restore this park and that's the Friends of Sam Houston Jones State Park. So I appreciate you watching this video today and I will see you again soon on another Louisiana Trail.